Live from the Cactus Creek at Ibri, he is the king of prime time, Ghana's undisputed entertainment laureate, and still the youngest old man in Ghana. Put your hands together, show some love for the indefatigable KSM. KSM show. Hello! Hey, you know, like my uncle said, family and friends not there. And one here, the baby. If you don't have an uncle, I'm sorry. But me there, I have a brother. Do you know who that brother is? My brother is a chief. Some of you put the KSM thing together, but I don't think you put this one together. Today, my brother, the chief, is the one that I will be interviewing. You see, I have my clothes. He's a chief. On hey bar, I saw we in the gym. We be in the gym. So please let's introduce Nana Ansa Kwa. Nana, 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 Nana Reverend, Nana Reverend, Nana Reverend, Nana, Nana now, Nana. Nana, if I try to know. That's it. Nana, my name is Mitsu Nasi. Sempa. Hey, hey, Nana, so still ah, we now here on here. KSM show. You can enjoy your coffee at home and in your car. So, why insure just your car? Introducing Homeprehensive, a single insurance policy for both your car and home. Get Homeprehensive from Vanguard because when it comes to insuring your car and home, for boom preco. KSM show. Thank you very much for coming, Nana and Sapao. Isn't that amazing? Well, I am uh, honored, glad, pleased, name it. Very happy. But Nana, you, you are not fair because you never invited me to your show. Eh, at least Green Essentials, dear. That's true. When I was doing, uh, no, but when I was doing personality profile, you were not doing Green Essentials then. Hey, Chief, are you mm, sure? Yes, yes, yes. I anyway. got off TV before you kicked off. <laughs> anyway, 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 it's glad to have you here. Mm -hmm. um, for some of you that don't know, this is my brother, blood, one mother, one father. <laughs> <laughs> and and, 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 and this, this one, he's actually like my twin brother, to be honest. He's my twin. I don't know. He just came 10 years before me. <laughs> We're all together. He left. 10 years later, I came. You don't leave your twin alone. You can't leave your twin alone. <laughs> Very if, true. <laughs> if if he likes something, trust me, I also like it. And if I like it, I know he likes it. That's how we roll. <laughs> no, not today. Yeah. Um. So I did my first interview, but you know, KSM said we are doing family and friends. I know, right? And we are from <laughs> Chevy. We'll do some. <laughs> yeah, well, you don't have the moral rights to point a finger anymore. No, oh, no, no. <laughs> But we have more family. <laughs> so, Nana, so today what I want to talk about is everybody knows Nana and Sakwa. Mm. Um, but me, I, I remember Brakweku. I know, right? Then Brakweku became Walash. <laughs> then Walash became Nana and Sakwa. Now Brakweku Kadi has gone. Mm -hmm. Every now and then, my kids call you Uncle Walash sometimes. Now he's Uncle Chief. <laughs> so, the Brakweku that I remember. Hiroko <laughs> was a senior guy. <laughs> then he went to London, came back. But Brakweku was, Nana and Sakwa was a little calm. Brakweku was very hyper. <laughs> what, what happened to, before we go to Nana and Sakwa, what happened to Brakweku who became Walash? Well, 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 I think uh, they say God has a, you know, God has a humor, you know, funny way of uh, taming everyone. Uh, I'm a free spirit by nature, so. Had it not been the stew, well, I don't know what I would have been. Maybe a punk. <laughs> <laughs> That's God for the stew. <laughs> Had it not been the stew, right. you know, I'd probably be a punk. So there are so many things that I restrain myself from doing because now 
uh, you're not your own. You know, you 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 have an office right. that you must respect. Uh, people have bestowed their honor on you, and you can't go about doing. Mm. But I've, I, you know, I've broken most of the conventions. But you know, I just on the borderline. I don't like, cross. But like I, the motorbike. Like the motorbike, you know. <laughs> 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 you know, like the motorbike. It's not very uh, conventional for chiefs to. I mean, I know one or two who are on a bike, but not many of them will get on a bike. So and and, and put a picture on Facebook. <laughs> See, look at me. <laughs> look at me, the chief. Look at me on the bike. <laughs> uh, look at me on the bike. So I've done that. But uh, yes, I really enjoyed my Brakwaku days. I really enjoyed my Brakwaku days, you know, we had fun. We lived life uh, still on the borderline. You, you even wore mommy's skirts. Took to, pictures to, of the beach. To the beach. She said, that, 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 was, that was the <laughs> Myself and Andrew Furry. Andrew Furry. And Andrew Furry. Don't and come in. Come Andrew Furry. Andrew Furry is who come. Uh, I was scared was to the saying. beach. For what reason? I don't know. Maybe uh, youthful exuberance I, I, then. I, I suppose. Youthful exuberance then. But it it uh, it built us. Uh, it gave us a lot of experience. Uh, so now I'm able to you know advise somebody and say, look, I've been there. I've done that. Mm -hmm. So this is right or that's wrong. That's so. Cool. It was a good experience. But when you were there, you were not listening to your advice. Mm. No, you have to live it. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 have to, you have to live through it. Uh, that's the best advice is going through an experience. Well, you I'm know. sure. So, yeah, so we went through it. We went through it. I but see. I must say, in all our wild days in my Missy, we stayed away from drugs and alcohol, which is very true. Yeah. Yeah. In our wild days of stealing daddy's car <laughs> and doing, going and out it and crashing it times. and crashing it, we stayed away from drugs and alcohol, which is very mm -hmm. amazing. And there are people who sometimes, like when I tell them today that I never, ever once touched any illicit drug, they were like, really? I said, no, really? I never did. So somehow we were able to build our own confidence to do whatever it is that we wanted to do. Exactly. We did not need any... Uh, it, was, it was all you. It was all me. We didn't need any ex ex external push. <laughs> 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 the Vim was there was already. <laughs> the Vim was, was internal. I see. More internal. So I remember those days, right? If mm -hmm. we had to steal Dad's car, you see, we, the gate was a I bit... Know, no, no. I know the strategy. <laughs> <laughs> I know the <that> strategy. <laughs> but you, you saw it. But I know the strategy. See? Well, the gate, the gate was a bit noisy, so you have to, you know, really manage the gate so it doesn't make noise. And you couldn't start the car in the house because uh, they would hear the car running. And then there was a little hill getting out of the house, a little ramp. So you need to push the as hard push. as possible <laughs> <laughs> to the house and then just let the car roll. And it would just stop right after the gate. And then <laughs> Boys are brave. <real. laughs> oh, Charlie. <laughs> uh? But, but uh, what you missed was, you see, the interesting thing was, you see, once the car was going, if, if they catch you, you're in trouble. <laughs> so the minute my mom says, Kweku, whether you are the beginning or the end, you still move. <laughs> <laughs> because if you stop, <laughs> how that day? Uh, but anyway, it was fun. Uh, it was fun. It was. I'll tell you what my worst experience was, right? So we still that is Mercedes. Mm -hmm. Myself, Androfuri, Azigi, God bless his heart, Tontoli, Eva, our dear sister, oh. Eva. And so, I was cleaning the car in the morning and then mom went out. So after cleaning the car, I went to park the car outside and I closed it, I shut the gate. <laughs> so mom came home and assumed that the car was back in the, the car was back in the garage. So in the evening we all dressed up, borrowed daddy's clothes they had on top. And then so off we were going to trade fair. There was something happening at trade fair. So we get to Tetekwashi and as we were driving, I don't know where mom's coming from, like a beer cost oh or something. So they see the car and they are flashing, flashing. I don't know. I'm not going to stop. <laughs> so they chase, they chase us to circle. And my time, you know, those, when we got to circle, there's traffic. So oh, no. we can go. So <laughs> mom gets out, come to circle. So we all have to get out of the car. Oh my God. She takes the car from me. I mean, so we all get out of the car. But everybody in the car knew that the car was mm -hmm. stolen anyway. So, well, it wasn't stolen, it was borrowed. Borrowed from that. <laughs> then I give her the keys. Now she says, now you are tired mommy. Oh, how? 
It's like oh, what you got now, dear? Everything you, you borrowed. <laughs> Now and here. <laughs> and so, so she took the car and then we carried on from circle and you know went to our trade fair, still had fun and came back. Oh really? Yeah, yeah without the car. That was, so what, what happened when you came home? Was that woman there? No, but funny enough, I think oh she was I'm sure she, she was, was cool. fed up. Yeah, she, I think she was fed up then, because when I came back it was quite cool. Mm, wasn't as wild as previously. You know. I see. Mm, but yeah, they took the car for me at Circle. Anyway, good old day. So, so now let's go back to um, London. So, Balash, Bakweku, and then you go to London. London was a good, London was a whole university for me. Mm -hmm. It's a whole university, you know, it's like learning, unlearning everything I had learned and redoing everything differently. Uh, luckily, we had a good foundation in terms of discipline. Right. So, in terms of all our, in all our wildness, there was that there discipline. Was discipline. But I had to start like schooling all over again. again. You know, attitude towards work, and you know, because of my dyslexia, when I got to London, I was shying away from anything office work, office okay. work. So, okay. I mean, mine was. In London, mine was sales and marketing, things that would, I had to talk. Right. And so I discovered that I was very good at it. So, you know, all the high-end shops with shoes, cars, everything, I was there. Okay. And when I got to Peugeot, Peugeot was very good. Every two weeks or every two months, they'll send you to Coventry. They have a school in Coventry, okay. you know, and they will teach you. I mean, they will literally school you. And so the, the, the experiences I got for, with Peugeot, you know, it stayed with me till now. So me, uh, if anybody were to ask me, I'm literally a sales and marketing person where, you know, I probably should have had a little school training, training people, people on how to yeah. sell and how to market themselves. That was what, what I should have been. But London was a whole university for me. It's a I whole, see. yes, 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 yes. Really life learning. Uh, process for and, me. And, and you were in London for how many years? About 16 years. Wow. Yeah, so about 16 wow. years. Mm, 16 years. And it was a whole school. I mean, I <coughs> really got a good exposure. One thing I didn't lose was my Pan Africanism. I never okay. lost I never okay. lost that. I never lost that. However, I, I know people in London who actually thought you were a chief. You know, I remember when I became a chief and I put it on my social media that mm -hmm. I became a, somebody came and commented, ah, so uh, all this time you were not a chief. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know, and, and you could see the disappointment in the in the in the, in the comments. <laughs> it's you all this time you were not the chief. I used to walk into outdoor rings and they'll shut to let everybody stand up, and then I'll come and sit before they'll let everybody sit. And any time was about to serve, they, you see. And it wasn't because I requested it; it's just because they assumed they, they, they it. Assumed. Yeah, it's just because they assumed no, it. No, but, but not to catch you. You know, we had this this uh, help, Adobia, mm -hmm. right? And me, I don't know if you if you knew. But even when we were young, I think even, so I'm talking maybe you are 19, 18. Mm -hmm. She used to call you Odiko. I think so. Yeah, I she think said, so. you know, hey, Braco, could I, I oil who's Odiko? <laughs> 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 so, I guess, you know, <coughs> it, it, it was just meant to be. No, I didn't have any chieftaincy ambition then. Right. No, not at all. But the way I carried myself, because I was, when everybody, when we were in London and everybody was in their jeans and all this, that, I was always in my smoke. And I'd order it from Musu, so they would put the talisman and everything yeah, in yeah, it. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. all the smokes I wear as a chief with the talisman in there was smokes I had when I was in the chief. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when I became a chief, I had the uniform already. You're already, <laughs> you're already out. I was already there. I was already there. And you're, and you're walking I always had my walking stick, always carved out and everything. I just liked that fashion. I guess maybe dad also introduced us to Chebi quite uh, a yes, bit early. I so, guess. and I was one person that started asking questions. Mm -hmm. Because you see, in chieftaincy and traditional matters, from a side, it looks very chaotic, unplanned, mm -hmm, doesn't mm -hmm, make sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when you ask and they explain to you, you'll be amazed. Oh, okay, that's the reason why. Thing. Yeah, so I fell in love with tradition and culture quite early. And it stayed with me, you know, forever. So, Chief, you're in London 16 years. Mm. I mean, this is, people are dreaming to travel. And 16 years, you decided, I want to come back to Ghana. Why? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, it, it was like, 
like a switch just that went off. So I just, you know, got to a point and said, look, I've, I'm done here. I've paid my dues. I'm going back home. Just like that? Just like that. So it was like, pack up, pack up, pack up, pack up, ship my things and then boom, just came. The it was gods, just like a the switch. Gods of a I think the gods of Edumasa were saying, look, <coughs> you, need to, you need to come back <laughs> home. <laughs> But you didn't have a dream. No, I didn't have any dream. I didn't have any dream or vision. It was just just get out of this just, town. It's time to leave. It's time to leave. Okay, so so you came back to Ghana. I mean, you didn't do the chief sensei thing right away. No. So what I mean, what did you do before you became a chief? Well, were you like the typical returnee? No, Traffic no. door song. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe the system is not working. Were you that returnee? No, I think my a noisy my, one. My my first. Holy Spirit encounter was when I was coming to Ghana. Just as the plane was touching down, somebody told me now you, you have to switch to resident mode. Because, <laughs> you know, in 16 years you come and go, come and go. Anytime you come, you're in holiday mode. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, you get to town and you have to call everybody, eat mm -hmm. at every restaurant, visit everybody. I mean, honestly, just as the plane was touching down, I mean, just something whispered in my spirit, look, now you're in resident yeah, mode. Resident mode. <laughs> so there's no need calling everybody, visiting everybody, eating at every exactly. restaurant. Now you are here some. Eventually they will see you. Eventually they will see you. So literally when I came, I just knew that, look, there was no rush calling everybody or going out mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. eating expensive lunches. No. So I immediately switched to resident mode. And it really helped. It really helped. So I wasn't in a rush to do anything. I just really slowed down my pace. And gradually, gradually build yourself into. And I, you know, you come, you have friends here, you have contacts here. There are certain services that you can render, but mm -hmm. they're already doing it with other people, exactly. people who already give them credit. So they won't just stop and say, "Oh, because you've come, you mm -hmm. know, come mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. come and fill in the gap." So you have to be really patient, really patient. Once, and once you decide, to once you, and, and and most people know that. Oh, in the next six months you check out, you mm. go back, you can't mm -hmm, stand. Mm -hmm, so you mm -hmm. have to stay the course. And I keep telling people, it takes five years to completely assimilate into the system. Wow. Yeah, yeah. whole five years. Whole five. First year, they'll be asking you, when are you going back? Mm -hmm. And then second year is like, ah, are you still here? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then the third year is like, ah, you know, are, 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 you know. <laughs> <laughs> then the fourth year is like, oh, okay, I'm doing your fifth year. That they know that you are part of us. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. when people start giving you gigs, contracts, there's that, that, right, that. So right. you must stay the course. You can't think, oh, you just flew in, you came, you have this machine or this service, so your friends and your contacts automatically say, oh, come okay, and get. No, 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 they won't. You started some radio in the UK. Yes, before. Rainbow. But, but where did that want to come from? You see, now I came to work with Sapphire, you know. So mm -hmm. me, I'm a student of this household. <laughs> and uh, I should come for a certificate because I'm a grade A, grade a student. And we used to have lessons. I mean, Safa, KSM yeah. used to have like lessons, teach, literally teach us cinematography, writing, this, that, 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 that. And I really learned, you know, yeah, I really, really learned it. Dito, dito, chu and po. You know, and I remember he used to tell us that you always have to script. You have to rewrite, you have to read through your script and mm -hmm. this and that. Mm -hmm. I mean, dito, 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 dito. Most people who were there were learning the comedy, okay. just the comedy aspect. Comedy aspect. Yeah, but I wanted the technical, you know, and I learned it. So when I was in the UK, I had a friend who said, listen, I listen to people on radio. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, you have more depth, you know, than they are. And I think exactly. you can... You can go on radio. And I said, no, no, I don't think so. And he says, no, I think you just try it. Mm -hmm. So I did it. Well, you know, that first, I did my first okay. script. Uh, my first script was about, was about funerals. How we fuss. <laughs> <laughs> How we fuss over, over funerals. And, uh, you know, there's a guy who was in hospital and the bill came, right? And the family wouldn't come and take him out of hospital. Okay. So he asked the doctor to tell the family that he was dead and then doubled the bill. And then immediately, they, everybody trooped in. Trooped in to come <laughs> hey, for the dead body. <laughs> so when, when they came, he was, he was sitting there thinking, 2,000 CD, my mate, 10,000 CD for the dead body. You are all... <laughs> <laughs> 
when is that? Oh, I think that was my first opinion, you know, how we fast okay. over. Okay. And this oh, was in UK? It was in UK, 2006. Oh. Okay. You know, so uh, that was in Rainbow Radio, you know, hit and miss, hit and miss, but it took off, you know, and I did it all the way through to 2010 before I came to Ghana. Okay. So. Mm. Uh, so I stumbled on radio, but uh, I should have gone into sales and marketing, which I had more, you know, spine for. But uh, look at me. We'll hold you up right there. We'll go for a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we are going to Edumasa. How he moved from London to Accra to radio to Edumasa. We're going to delve into that. Thank you. KSM show. You can enjoy your coffee at home and in your car. So, why insure just your car? Introducing Homeprehensive, a single insurance policy for both your car and home. Get Homeprehensive from Vanguard because when it comes to insuring your car and home, for boom preco. My name is Samuel Isuma. I'm head of distribution for Vanguard Assurance Company Limited. We've introduced the comprehensive policy that will ensure that families, friends, relatives who have their homes and their vehicles can combine the two and have one single insurance product that will give them the peace of mind to be able to enjoy what they do at home and also in the car as well. So. All Ghanaians, we are appealing to you that there is a need to focus on your home and make sure there is adequate financial security protection cover for your home so that when you, in an event where you lose your home, you don't lose hope. But Vanguard will be right behind you, stand by you, and make sure that you bounce back to life again. So if you are thinking about ensuring both your home and your car, Think about the home preemptive. Not for boom preco. The KSM Show. And we're back with the Chief Nana and Sequel. Is that the name? That's Nana the, and Sequel. That's the, okay. the fourth. The fourth. Oh ye, oh ye, a cashere. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Nana, so now let's 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 go to Edumasa. So you came back from London, you know, you're doing some radio. Uh, I, th I think you were okay, and then the next thing we knew, was what about the tree? Kweku, you know, I mean, I mean, had you planned it? Did you want to do it? I mean, what was the story with with that one? No, it was well, good old Uncle Larry, which is Mum's elder brother. Kenno. Colonel. So it was basically Colonel's turn to go and be the chief. Right. And Colonel said he was too old mm -hmm. to go and be the chief. So he wanted a younger person. And he thought amongst the family I was more suited probably because <laughs> <laughs> he thought I was more suited. I initially said no because I didn't even know we were from Adumasa. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew mm -hmm. you were from Chebi. In fact that's true because I mean we have always heard the name but I didn't actually even think that we were from there. No, no, no. I, we've heard from Chebi at Akropong. Okay. We knew the family from Chebi migrated from Abomusu. But the Komo family never told us that they migrated from Edumasa. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it was through Uncle Larry that I got to know that, you know, there was that Edumasa link. So October 2010 was the first time he ever took me to Edumasa. And so 2010 we're in October. 2010 in October. So we're going to do a reconnaissance to see how the place will be like. So we go, the elders are all seated there. Mm -hmm. Uncle Larry comes and says, well, this is the nephew that he's talked about. So the elders are there. And then I remember one of them said, okay, so they would have to go and have a caucus meeting mm -hmm. to come and say if it's a yes or no. Okay. And then God bless Uncle Biahine, he's now dead. Oh. He says, wow, how did she away me that? It's like, have you seen one of these royals in this town before? <laughs> why, why should we do it? I'm Baba Kade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 
and I didn't, I couldn't say anything because that wasn't the agreement. Wasn't whether you're here tomorrow or not. Okay. Whether we're going to see the town. Yes, see the town. So they went through all the thing, did the snap, thank the gods for mm -hmm. bringing the royal and everything. I remember when we were driving out to the town, and uncle, I asked uncle if there was water in the town, and he said he didn't know. I nearly died. Wow. Hey. <laughs> they don't even have water to drink. <laughs> what, what can I do? For, what can I do for them? Okay. And he says, oh, don't worry, you, I got your back. So mm. we came back and uh, January 2011, I was mm -hmm. the chief. From October to January? Yeah, from October to January, I was the wow. chief. I was literally a <laughs> uh, stranger uh, visitor chief wow. at the same time. Yeah, yeah. That, so, that was quick. That was quick. So, so, so what, what went to the process? I mean, well, so they, then, you know, they say, they, you know, they always say, yeah, mm -hmm. you so when they, you know, and sometimes they make it look very, I mean, look very scary. Mm. You know, it's like, what did you go see? A bra for a bar? What exactly happens? Well, basically, they make a fuss in your catching or capturing. Right. So that people in the vicinity would know that something is happening and okay. that okay. the Nima or Kwekumisa is going to be, you know, taken okay. to hold this office. See, because... It's like a form of advert to make everybody know. Okay. Now, when you are captured, for want of a better word. Okay. So, you, sorry, not to catch you. So, are there people, so they will never come and take you without you deciding? So, well, they can. at the time you have, they can? Yeah, they can. They can. Really? Yeah, they can. If once, once they've looked through the family and they think that, listen, this is the person suitable for the position. Most people don't want to do it because it's a whole sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's all sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You have to let go of all the things that you love doing privately exactly. to now come and be a certain person, you know. But if the family feels that there's a responsibility, you know, there's a stool in the house mm -hmm. or there's an office in the house and they can't let go, they can force against you. Against your will. Yeah, they can force you against your will to wow. do it. Mm, it's against okay. your will to do it. Okay. Because sometimes it's not that you don't want to do it. It's just that you don't want to let go you of your go. private life. Exactly. Yeah, so they can force you to do it. Okay. So mm -hmm. so now take us through the process. Mm -hmm. So they come, they take you. Where did they take you? What happens? Well, so they came they to Akropong. Right. You know, and then they will beat the gong gong all around the town, saying that, look, we're looking for this guy. He's going to be a chief here. We want him, blah, blah, blah. So the announcement mm -hmm. goes out. Then uh, once they get you, you know, they inform the family that mm -hmm. uh, we've come for him or her. If it's amicable like mine, mm -hmm. then the, the family would hand you over to the kingmakers. Okay. So there will be an official handing over. So basically, they are, your family is washing their hands off you. Oh. Which means even if you die, your body won't come back to the family. Oh, my So Jesus. it's like an official farewell, bye-bye. So... You are not mine like that. You see now. <laughs> and I'm only finding out today. <laughs> <laughs> then they will camp you for between a week to a month, depending on the size. Because okay. then you do a crash course. So the camping people think there's uh, your ball in a pot. No, no, no. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a crash course. Uh, they tell you the do's and don'ts, uh, the traditions, okay, so the like history. Just some yeah, so it's like a really orientation within a week. Mm -hmm. Uh, just, you know, Chief 101 or Queen Mother 101. <laughs> and then once you're on the stool, you get to learn more. But at least they give you a crash course 101. And then on the day of instalment, they make all that fuss because people have to know you, see you. Okay. There's a whole okay. lot of symbolism, symbolism, symbolism. Because uh, no town would want the Chief to be walking in somebody's hair. Oh, mm -hmm, you know, everybody mm -hmm, should know that, mm -hmm. oh, no, hold on, oh. This is a chief. This is a chief. Yeah. So they do all that fast to announce, 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 announce your office mm. to give you that reverence and then they keep you there. Because I remember, you know, when on that day, one of my aunties kept saying, <laughs> 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 uh, good So it's all part of it, you know. It's all part of it. Okay. They make a whole lot of fuss, you know, you go through from one stage to the other, to the to other, other, to the other. That. Basically to announce the office, to announce the new holder of the office and, you know, you're paraded. But before then, you're also shown to the town for anybody to say, you know, speak now or forever, hold your peace. Oh, yeah, oh. so they'll, yeah, they'll show you to the town that, look, this is the guy we're going to choose as the chief. Mm -hmm. If anybody has anything to say, you can 
coming down and say yes or no. no. Yeah. So if you say no and they put him on the stool, you can't come you back. You can't and, come back. And yeah. Oh, yeah. So I if you see. know that he's been in prison before, say, I go in minimum and sell meat. Oh no! Oh no! Then, then we can abolish it. But if you don't, and the person then gets instilled yeah, and then installed, then that's, that's it. That's it. I see. I see. There's so many chieftaincy disputes. Mm. Why? Why is that? Because we refuse to do or respect what the forefathers left us mm -hmm. we've gone to school so we think we know the better version but if you know if you if you analyze what our forefathers left it was very very solid and entrenched what has happened is that i know you know the families have now grown mm -hmm. as to whether that structure can hold the families uh i don't know but to deviate from it you see the queen mother's role in the town Mm -hmm. is to serve like a supreme <coughs> court justice okay yeah she's like this, as the queen mother this, she's like the chief justice you see but now that you know you women have degrees and you know whatever <laughs> it is they think that oh no the queen mother is not supposed to express opinions okay no no she has to be just somewhere minding her whole business quiet mm -hmm. from a from from afar it looks like oh you know, she can't contribute. No, 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 no. Okay. The Queen Mother is exempt from anything political. Anything political, the Queen Mother is exempt. exempt. That's why you hear so many things like, you could be Sabrewa, Abrewa Sisi, Abrewa Sisi, Abrewa Sisi. The Abrewa is the Queen Mother. Okay. So anytime there's a dispute in the town, anybody at all can go to the Queen Mother and mm -hmm. seek resolution. Mm -hmm. But now, the Queen Mother also thinks that I have, a, I have an opinion. So I can be in there mingling with them. Oh. Now, as soon as you mingle, you take a side. Exactly. So if the Kumeda is on my side, then it means this other side, if they have an issue, they'll go to court. Ah. So things that originally Queen Mother's resolved are now in court. Are now in court. Now, if you go to a court, the, the, the court doesn't know Edumasa. It doesn't know the history or the culture of Edumasa. You have to go and narrate all oh. this thing and bring the judge's mind, mind. into that frame before you before even move on to the substantive case but wow. don't forget that the judge has also got other cases however the queen mother you don't even have to go and remind him of the history of the town because they already know they already know so if it's an issue of that this person is entitled or this person is not entitled the queen mm. mother knows and can easily resolve it however the queen mother now is part of the politics mm. you see so if we, if we were to go back to what our forefathers left us exactly. that the queen mother should be exempt from politics expressing opinions mm -hmm. mingling mm -hmm. you know the queen mother should not be seen mingling anywhere she's always in her house just be there training maidens advising maidens yeah consult so that even if you go and visit her you don't sit you just come over oh, everywhere i was just passing to mm -hmm. see how you're doing i'm fine okay i brought you some rice i brought you some food stuff there's your money bye bye i'm Kofi. going Kofi. Yeah, Apon. Apon. queen wow. mother is no friends and mingles with anybody so that everyone who has an issue when it gets to the dying end you can go to the queen mother and whatever she says you know it's fair because she's not on she, anyone's side. On side but we've lost that so there's all disputes it's everywhere disputes. Okay, and then let, let me go to another issue before. Why is it that, like in your cans, for instance, I know at least a crop on we do is matrilineal. Mm -hmm. Why why not your child? And why why does it have to be your aunties or your nephew? Well, well because they, uh, they believe that the blood that runs through the female, in respect of the man, it's the same blood. Okay. Yeah, so okay. then they go through the matrilineal uh, type of inheritance. Those who do patrilineal, honestly, I don't know what uh, the reason, what their line is mm -hmm. with the mm -hmm. patrilineal. But for the matrilineal, it's because they believe that the blood that runs through the females, it's the family blood. The so family. irrespective of who she gave birth with, she it's, still has the blood. Yeah, child. she's a child. Okay. Yeah. Because you can have a child that's not yours. But you if know. me... My child, even if I don't know the father, doesn't matter. Yeah, could, still be a, the uncle. Could, could, be, could be an alien. <laughs> <laughs> could be, could, if you come from Mars, <laughs> you could run from Mars today, have a baby. Uh, that's, exactly. That's my alien nephew. <laughs> <laughs> that's my alien. Whether nephew. you like it or not, 
interesting. Mm -hmm. So then you became a chief, and then you came and married Madame Giftianzi. I know, right? Hey, a senior guy. It's a whole, a whole institution <laughs> altogether. Yeah, it's a whole institution altogether. Yes, yes, yes. So, and she's done well, you know. She's used her office and her following and everything to project. Exactly. Masa, you know. She, you know, she has a... I would as well reading, reading project. project. She has the happy, happy feet. feet she know. has the Christmas parties. You know, there's a, there's a yeah. whole lot that she's done. Because mm. before she came on board, I was doing the Christmas parties and everything. Now I don't even bother. <laughs> <laughs> You sleep. Oh, yeah, you know the party will be done. And you're there to happen. Let's give it up. Let's give it up. Oh, God. Oh, God. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Gifting. Thank you. Uh, no, uh, you, guys, you guys have a beautiful daughter. Uh, no. Ahinkai. What is Ahinkai? Ahinkai. The, the first child when you became a chief or a queen mother. So, you, oh. so I have three other kids. Mm -hmm. But the first one that you have as a chief becomes a hinkain. So the other ones are a hinba, a hinba. A hinba, but a hinkain yeah, is oh. the first one there. Yeah. So if you have more kids then they become what? But a hinkain is always special because that was the first one that's the first one right? yeah. Okay, mm. okay, mm. okay. That's fine. So now let's talk about you know, I know you're very passionate about Edumasa, mm -hmm. the whole chieftaincy business. You, you know, thinking about taking schools there, you guys did spelling B. You know, tell, t tell us about that. What exactly is happening? What are you doing? And are the people responding? I'm a selfish legacy hunter. Okay. I'm a very selfish legacy hunter. You know, I don't want to be a chief and go, and people who come before me, or even people who are alive would say, oh, he hasn't got anything to show for. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. I'm pushing mm -hmm. hard so that those who are there today would see what I've left, and those who come before would say, ah, and Sakwa the fourth, Abresona, this happened, that happened, right. this happened. And I think every leader should have that mentality, mm -hmm. you know, because if you don't have that selfish mentality, people don't want change, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy for the leader to say, listen, I was going to bring a good to the place. If you're going to resist it, forget it, because it after all, it was going to benefit you rather than me. Mm -hmm. And then if you say forget it, then you would probably be a leader who hasn't left a legacy. Okay. So when you are okay. bringing a good, and it's generally a good, whether they resist it or not, bring it, because eventually that's going to be your legacy. Because okay. here, yeah, okay. you could be yeah. That's good, that's good. Mm -hmm. You could be bringing a school, you could bring in a clinic, and, and the they people, could say yeah, no. they would resist it. And you think, ah, hold on, you know, maybe I do my checkups in London, I do mm -hmm. my checkups in America this clinic was going to be for, for you. you. Right. So if you are resisting it, Mpembe means I mean, I'll do my checkup. Mm -hmm. By the time you finish, you had finished your leadership role and not left anything. Nothing. But knowing that a clinic is good, a school is good, ref school reforms are good, insist and bring it. Because one day, that's the same people who resisted it will come back mm -hmm. and say, oh, na mm -hmm. way by. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Because, because there's that, a story of the Oya Keshre. Oya Keshre was uh, Nana Clara, who was a great grandmother. Right. His brother, uh, Abu mm -hmm. When he was, he was also taken to a Dumasa just like I was. Mm -hmm. Grew up in a Kropong, educated man. And then he was plucked, dropped in a Dumasa. Okay. And there, was, there were no vehicle access to a Dumasa then. Okay. So he said no. He was going to construct a road to the next lorry station. Again, the people thought, you know, are you crazy? For what? <laughs> and so the what will happen? There was a guy in the village who said the day a car will arrive in Edumaza, he will go and tell the ancestors that the car has come. <laughs> anyway, so gradually pick an axe and shovel and this. He dug a road from Edumaza wow. to Ajina. So Edumaza became the last stop. <laughs> <laughs> And when the when the car when cars came to Edumasa, mm -hmm. they said that hey, we are Keshri, so they don't they carry don't have things. To carry yes, things anymore. yes, and now it's his legacy. Exactly. But then the people thought, why should we construct a road? But no, he did. He did it, mm, and, and he it did. helped them. And he even left a title that I'm inheriting. Meanwhile, I never even constructed a, you know <laughs> a, a, a meter of road. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't constructed a meter of road yet. 
um, I am a year So that's how it is to leave a legacy. So what have you done in Edumasa? Well, you we, guys have done, you know, a number of things. We've done a number of things. We have a fantastic palace, very modern palace to stay mm -hmm, with, which mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. uh, like an honor for the whole town. Okay. Uh, we've done uh, cheetah training for uh, jollyphonics training mm -hmm, for mm -hmm, all our mm -hmm. teachers. I, 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 my, uh, yeah, I, see, I think that's my greatest legacy now, even though I know if you want to ask the people, that will not be the number one on their well, list. But for see. me, it's the number one because literacy moved from 36 to 89 percent. Wow. Which was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> mm. And because of the success of Edumasa, the whole district adopted Jollyphonics. Okay. Yes, yes. So the whole Isujaman district, from the success of Jollyphonics mm -hmm. in Edumasa, the district adopted it. So I think it's my biggest legacy. Yeah. We've yeah. done all avenue trees, like put lanes in there, so that as the town grows, mm -hmm. you know, there'll be roads so and avenue trees demarcated. properly demarcated. So we have all that. And we're building one of the probably best primary schools ever. <clears throat> it's going to be the nicest site school in West Africa. <laughs> West Africa, the <laughs> nicest I to school in West Africa. Wow. And we wow. are like 85% there oh, okay. now. Okay, of course. 85% there now. Really, I mean, when it finishes, to be state of the art. Really beautiful. Because I think that, you know, it would broaden their imaginations. Exactly. When, yeah, to exactly. broaden their imaginations. So well, everything doesn't have to, every nice thing doesn't have to be in Accra. No, 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 no. Every no. nice thing. And, so, and, some nice and things can be in the Republic. I know. <laughs> the little <laughs> Republic of Edumasa. Yeah. No, but seriously, you've done well. Because now, I mean, so many people know Edumasa. Yeah, they they don't know where it is. They don't know where it came from. But at least they've heard. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and if you've done nothing at all, at least now, <laughs> a lot of people know, know Edumasa. There's, there's the little Republic of Edumasa. The little Republic yeah. of Edumasa. You're still a chief. Um, I'm, I'm sure you want to do more. But is there one thing that you could change, you know, if, if, if you had to do something today or change something as a chief, what would it be? Okay, so this is just a magic wand there. Eh? So yes. No, nobody should hold Abracadabra. Me. No, 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 <laughs> nobody should hold me to this. You see, I think the system where when the, like I say, if I'm no more, mm -hmm. and then automatically they're looking for a male heir to come and succeed, I think we should, that should change. Okay. You see, the, the historical role of the chief has kind of gone away. Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. it was f bow and arrow and fighting where the chief could go out for maybe three years, fighting in the bush, wow. protecting territories before even they come back home mm -hmm. to find mm -hmm. out what's mm -hmm. happening. Just, just fighting, fighting, fighting across territory. I mean, in Akwamu, ancestors who conquered from somewhere Cape Coast, Nyanewasi to Benin. Oh, oh. Yes. Or to one is territory straight from Yanwasi all the way to Daome. How could you fight all the way to Daome? So if you could, it would be very unfair to ask a woman to do that. Exactly. But today where I'm talking about jolly phonics, library, yeah, exactly. avenue trees. I mean, are you saying that it's only a man that can plant a tree and do a library? Maybe the library isn't even done by my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. You see, so I think now, in all fairness, if, if the stool becomes vacant, any any suitable royal, male or female, male or female, should, should be, yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah. I think yeah. that's good. But it's, it's only a wish. It's oh, a, it's uh, just the abracadabra. 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 <laughs> yeah, but in this modern world, dear, you know, there are women in other places who do far more than what their chiefs are, exactly. are doing. Yeah, who do what the chiefs are doing. It's, because it's like they're always looking for a man. Yes. And and excuse me to say, may not necessarily be competent, but he he has to go. He has to go. Oh no. Mm. So you know, no matter who you are, we have to polish you and bring you. I think I think they should not limit. As for the queen mother rule, media, leave it for the queen mother. Leave it for the queen mother. Keep her. Abrewa, abrewa. But the chief rule, dear, I think they should. But you you think it's something that will ever happen? Well, men being men and men making rules, yeah. We don't we don't make things happen. We always we always change the rules to suit us. The, the amount of rules we have changed in the past, you know, you have no idea. The amount of rules men have changed in the past. One little inch, boom, they are gone. You know, look, I was told that you know when Mohammed, peace be on him, said that 
men could marry for. It was mm -hmm. because it was in an era where there were plenty wars and crusades okay. and men were dying and there were women, you know, who were there. So he was like, you know, because of the proportion oh, being so big, so, I mean, you can one, marry at you know three more, and uh, now the proportion is we are not dying, and, but still. And, <laughs> so when, you are, when you are coming here, <laughs> whether there's war or not, you know, and he take you know, oh, interesting. Yeah. Mm, and, and and like with some traditions here now, where you're supposed to look after your brother's wife when the brother passes, mm -hmm. now the mm -hmm. men say, oh, well, we have to marry. Yeah, but that wasn't it. You were just supposed to be responsible. <laughs> I see. Nana, it has been fantastic having you on the show. Mm -hmm. Nana mm -hmm. and Sakrao, my brother, the chief of Edu Masai, the Little Republic. <laughs> he was here with us today. But we're going to have to leave. I didn't want to, but we're going to have to. So like here, sometimes we are out of here. <laughs>